everyone, my name's Polly and I'm the maker behind Candid. I'm based in Truro in Cornwall and I make wearable art out of polymer clay and I specialise in polymer clay earrings. So today, me and Hannah from Kerno Craft have teamed up and I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you on how to make your very own pair of polymer clay earrings, so let's get into it. So for this project you're going to need a plastic or an acrylic rolling pin. You're going to need a clay cutter or you could use a lid from a bottle or some cosmetics from around the house. You're going to need some pliers. You're going to need some scissors or some wire cutters. And this is a tissue blade. If you don't have one of these then you can use a sharp kitchen knife as long as you're careful. You're going to need two ceramic tiles and two pieces of cardstock. I got these fresh water pearls from Kerno Craft and they're absolutely beautiful uh, and these are the beads I'm going to be using today. You're going to need some flathead pins. You're going to need some ball stud earring posts. These are sterling silver from Kerno Craft and I think they're absolutely perfect and beautiful. You're going to need some jump rings, so you're going to need two smaller jump rings and four larger ones. And lastly, and most importantly, polymer clay. This is Scorpio Souffle in the colour Bluestone. So unwrap your clay and you're not going to need all of it so just chop off the end nub in and put the rest to one side. So we're going to need to condition this clay so using your rolling pin start working the clay. You're going to want to keep working it until it's not crumbly anymore and it's got to a nice smooth consistency. This can take a while. If you have a pasta machine then I definitely recommend using it, if you don't it's absolutely fine just keep using a rolling pin to flatten out the clay to an even sort of thickness, uh, two to three millimetres. Don't put the clay in fold side up, always put it in fold side down to avoid getting air bubbles in your clay. Keep going with the pasta machine until your clay feels smooth and there's no cracks showing through when you fold it. So you're going to want to be working on a sticky surface like glass or tile. Use your rolling pin really gently, roll your clay onto the surface and sort of stick it down ever so slightly. Using your clay cutter or lid or whatever you want to use, place that where you want to cut and firmly press all the different corners to get a nice clean cut. Make sure you're careful not to poke the clay and really, really gently lift it off and repeat the most satisfying part. <laughs> so grab one of your tiles, put one of your pieces of card on top, so using tissue blade, flat to the surface, lift the clay off the tile and then using your fingers really gently just smooth down any rough edges from cutting. If you don't have a drill at this point I recommend um, using a cocktail stick or a needle and pushing your holes through in your raw clay now. Make sure you're super careful with the pieces of clay so you don't leave any fingerprints or indents on the clay. When you're using the tissue blade, make sure you keep it really flat to the surface and pop that clay away to use again in the future. So if you pop your cardstock on top of that, like so, really gently, and then grab your second tile, put it the other way up so it's smooth side down, flat on top of the earrings, and be careful not to squish them and take that and pop it in your oven. You want your oven at about 110 to 120 degrees Celsius um, and you wanna bake it for probably about an hour. If you have an oven thermometer, I recommend using it. So while that's cooking, grab your beads and your head pins. Make sure they're correct, they're the correct width and they fit through your bead. Slide them on through. Using your pliers, gently bend the wire into a hook shape. And then grab your wire cutters or your scissors and eyeball it and chop it off. 
keep winding that round until we've got a nice round loop. Give it a squeeze and there you go, two beautiful little charms. I love these freshwater pearls. So once your clay's done baking, let it cool down properly. If you are impatient, then carefully put them into an ice bath and then you can use them straight away. When polymer clay is properly cured, it should not crack or break when you bend it, it should be flexible. This step is optional, uh, but I like to do it. I think it makes a real difference. So grab some soapy water. This is automotive wet and dry sandpaper. And I'm dipping that in the soapy water and then rubbing it all over the surface of my clay pieces. I'm starting with 1500 grit and working my way up to 3000 and then to 5000. This just helps create a really smooth texture on the clay. I don't know if you can see it, but you can definitely feel it. This one at the top has been sanded and this one at the bottom hasn't. I think the textures really look different. So grab a chopping board if you've not already done your holes when the clay was raw. I use my Dremel multi-tool with a small drill bit. Put it only onto setting one, you don't want it going too fast. And drill your holes. Now it's time to assemble our jewellery. Grab your smallest jump ring, open it up and pop it through your ball stud and close it up again. Like so. Then grab your first of the bigger jump rings and open that up. Slide it through the clay piece from the front and then pop the other jump ring you just did with the ball stood on onto it and close it up so it's nice and flush. Then grab your other large jump ring, open it up, pop it through the second hole and add on your pearl charm and close it up. And there you have it. Your very own polymer clay earring. I absolutely love this colour and I love, love, love the pearls and the sterling silver studs that I got from Kerno Craft. I think they absolutely make the, make the earrings. 